Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today's our first video in our electrical series. Do's and don'ts. So in the do's and don'ts series, I'm gonna be breaking down the basics of what you should and shouldn't do when it comes to electrical systems. Automotive electrical systems are one of those things that I find everybody and their brother thinks they know how to wire something up, wire an electric fan in, wire up an entire car, wire an EFI system, and more often than not, they really have no idea what they're doing. I'm not trying to be mean by saying that, I'm just saying I've had to fix so many wiring issues over my, over a decade in this business that it needs to be said. These things need to be put out there because I've seen people do them time and time again. Now, some of the topics we cover in the electrical series will be a little basic. That's just nature of the beast. I feel that some of the basics do need to be covered. If you don't understand the basics, you're not gonna understand the bigger topics either. So we're probably gonna fluctuate back and forth a little bit, but right now, this episode, let's dive right in. So for our first don't in this series, well, quite simply, don't use scotch locks. If you're not familiar with scotch lock, scotch lock is this little wire splice device. This company here that I picked these up at the local parts store, they call it a quick splice. The idea of this is it has one pass-through port and one port you stick a wire in. You stick this over a wire you want to tag into, maybe you need to tag into a wire that's going to an EFI system so you can run signal to a tachometer or signal to a oil pressure sender or a temperature sender. So you slide that over the wire if it's existing, you slide your new wire into the other side and it's got this blade here that you squeeze with a pair of pliers and it cuts the insulation on both wires to tie them together. So when it comes to these things, there's a lot of problems with them. Quite simply, they're just breeding grounds for corrosion and they're breeding grounds for resistance in wires. Problem is that these cutters in here, say this one, this yellow one that I have here, is rated for like 10 gauge wire. Yellow is generally around 10, 12 gauge wire. Well, the slots in there are very small. So if I was to stick a 10 gauge wire through here, squeeze down and cut into that insulation with it the way I'm supposed to, I'm gonna cut conductors. That means I've taken that 10 gauge wire and I've cut it down to the point where it's no longer 10 gauge wire anymore. And that's really a serious problem. You've already started out with no corrosion in the circuit by reducing the capability of that circuit. You've taken that 10 gauge wire from say 10 gauge to maybe 14 gauge. Now it might be undersized for your circuit. If you're doing something like a fuel pump wiring or a fan wiring, that could be a serious problem. That could really cause wiring to get burned up. The other problem with these is they are not sealed to the elements at all. So if you're using this outside of a car, maybe underneath in an engine bay, they're gonna be open to the elements all the time. So even just humidity will cause corrosion in those situations because the water can get to there. The moisture in the air can get to those wires and it can cause that corrosion, cause those problems you're gonna have later on. That's gonna increase your resistance and cause wiring issues. That's all it's going to do. Along with that, I found over the years that when I did use these, I had a lot of trouble getting them to actually make a decent contact, even when I use them the way they're supposed to be used. So they're just not a good option, any way, shape or form. They are not what you should do when you need to splice into a circuit. Or I've seen a lot of times trailers are really bad for this. They'll use these instead of butt connectors. That drives me nuts. I've looked at $3,000 brand new trailers I was interested in buying, stuck my head underneath them, and they were covered in these stupid scotch lock things. So there's plenty of good ways to splice into wires and there's plenty of way good ways to butt connect wires. We're gonna cover those in a different episode, but I felt that this was an extremely, extremely important one to cover in our first episode of Don't. I've seen these in every facet of cars from electrical systems controlling EFI to, to fuel systems, electric fans, stereo systems, all kinds of things, they are a problem. Do not, do not, do not use them. That's all I can say. So now, now it's time to talk about do. What should you do? Well, quite simply, replace everything. I know I'm diving right into the deep end of this, so I'm telling you to go hog wild, dive into that project, but it's something I really believe in. So many times I dive into a car where somebody's already been in there, they've hacked up the wiring, and I'm gonna spend days trying to sort out what wires do what, because, oh, they changed colors, that was a purple wire, I can see that over there, but now it's a green wire. So I gotta go through, I gotta figure out each circuit, what it's supposed to be doing, where it's supposed to be going, how it should be getting there, and splice in connections all over the place. More often than not, in the vast majority of cases, I replace everything. I just start over because it's going to be quicker in the long run and it's gonna be a significantly better project in the end. 
Now, there are a lot of companies out there building full wiring harnesses for cars. American Auto Wire is the one that I personally prefer and use most often. This is one of their Highway 22 systems. It's a 22 circuit panel that has relays, flashers, and ATC style fuses built right into it. And it's actually divorced from the main wiring so you can actually feed in each wire you need and not the ones you don't need. I like this because on some cars, say I don't have an EFI system on a car, I only have uh, carbureted, well then I can just go ahead and not put the wires in for the EFI circuits and that's it, simple, cleaner. I don't have added wires that I don't need. Now this Highway 22 kit retails for about $469 and really in the scheme of things, that's not that crazy. Wire adds up real quick. If you go to a parts store and you buy, say, all five spools of wire that they have in there and they're all four different colors, so now you're limited on how much you can do in a wiring situation, you're going to be changing those wiring colors, you could spend upwards of $100 just on those spools and not end up with nearly what you're getting in this kit. Like I said, there are plenty of companies out there making these kits, uh, Painless, Rebel Wire, uh, there's, there's a bunch of them out there. This is just the one that I prefer to work with. They're a good company, they're based in America, they're actually based in New Jersey. It used to be really close to them when I lived in Pennsylvania, and they do a really quality job and have really quality kits. All too often I've seen in older cars, classics from the 50s, the 40s, the 30s, where the fuse panels rotted in the thing. The actual clips that hold the glass fuses in, if you can even find glass fuses to replace those fuses nowadays, those are rotten. So they're increasing resistance in the circuit. It means they're going to be causing problems in the wiring right off the bat, no matter what you do. And I've actually had them where I try to stick a new fuse in them and the ears fall off of the fuse holders. Well, now I'm up a creek. I can't use that circuit anymore. I have to bypass it. I have to put in an external fuse holder. That's no good. This, this is the way to go. These folks have all kinds of different kits that are going to work in all kinds of different applications. They do have vehicle specific kits as well. Say your 66 Chevy pickup truck that you've updated and you resto modded it, you've lowered it, you've slammed it, you put EFI in it. Well, now you got the original like five or six fuse panel underneath the dash. What are you going to do with that? Eliminate it. Get one of their kits. It'll bolt right into place where the old fuse panel went or a new location that makes more sense for their panel. And then it has the right lengths of wire to go to the different parts of the vehicle you need. You do have to wire the ends, you do have to crimp the ends, and they have good videos on their YouTube channel about how to do that properly and how to use their kits. But it really works out well. Using one of these kits will allow you to have a better running, better driving vehicle than you're not chasing electrical gremlins the entire time you're trying to deal with it. Now, I know it's easy to say spend money, spend money, spend money. Unfortunately, that's the reality of the situation. You need to spend money to have a quality finished product. Like I said, if you take all the time you're going to add up splicing wires, repairing them, butt connectors, those spools of cheap wire that aren't going to be right for your situation, all of that added up, you're going to spend what you would have spent on something like this to begin with. So this is just a better way to go all around. For you folks doing restorations rather than resto mods or custom cars, well they also have some specific fit applications. So I know I've worked on like a 58 Chevy before where we needed a taillight harness because the taillight harness was chewed up. Well they had a new properly wrapped taillight harness that looked right for the vehicle and had all new wires, all new connectors, and that was really nice. You can go ahead and set that up so that your original systems are going to be clean, look right, and work better than they were if you just tried to cobble together and clean up the original wiring. There are also other companies out there doing restoration reproduction harnesses that will work for your application. I know one that comes to mind off the top of my head is a company called Electric. They make ones for say Chevelles and Camaros and Mustangs that look original, have all new wiring, and connect to your original systems. So if you're going for that restoration, you wanna keep things original, they do have good quality options for you to replace your stuff as well. So quite simply, I know this was a quick and simple one. Like I said, some of these are gonna be a little more basic than other ones, but I think that electrical systems are an extremely, extremely important part of cars and you really need to pay attention to them. So with that, that's bringing this video to an end. If you have any questions, something you'd like to see covered in a future video, let me know in the comments down below. I would be happy to cover whatever systems you're having trouble with, whatever questions you might have. Drop this video a like if you found it informative, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for coming around, folks. Have a good one.